welcome to all uh, let us continue with the uh, previous concept so now the next point is viewing uh, log files okay so you have to remember one thing uh, as the system uh, doesn't have any brain it has to keep track of all the works which have you know uh, which uh, which is done by the operating system as well as if there are any errors if there are any problems or if there are any pending work that has to be you know carried out all the information has to be listed out to somewhere isn't it so that system can uh, make sure that rest of the things or the pending things can be accomplished uh, successfully you know it has to accomplish all the things uh, you know successfully isn't it that is the reason why uh, it has to keep track of each and everything that can be done using log files okay that is a one perspective of log log file so uh, different kind of log files can be possible for different uh, concepts but uh, ultimately log files are required to uh, maintain the things i can say like that okay to maintain the overall things which are going or which are happening in the system the log file viewer displays a number of log logs by default including your system logs or syslog we say package manager log or dpkg dot log so in the linux system dpkg means all the package managing management okay if there are any broken packages or if there are any issues with the application you can update the dpkg or you can uh, reinstall or you can you can work on dpkg more okay the next thing uh, next thing is authentication log so auth a u t h dot log so authentication means for any uh, particular application it maybe or for system logging or you know passwords or you know recovery concepts all those things can be uh, you know achieved using authentication log so to identify the authenticity of a particular person or the user and graphical server log or uh, xorg.0.log dot zero dot log so that is a file extension or file uh, you can view all the logs in a single window when a new log event is added okay it it will automatically appear in the window and uh, will be uh, you know uh, bolded so whatever the logs and whatever the concepts you are going to see in a particular uh, you know tab that will be highlighted uh, th th that is the reason why they say like that you know bolded that they use use the word bolded you can also press ctrl f to search your log messages or the um, filters menu to filter your logs that also possible though those are the you know options given for filtering of logs and log files and ultimately these are the some of the log files which you will find in the computer system mainly under linux operating system you have to remember that it is mainly for linux operating system fine so this is a screenshot which you can see so the, uh, now you are highlighting the syslog or system log that is the reason why that syslog will be uh, you know selected and whatever the concepts they, they have listed out there you can see so june 30 logging time and working time and kernel based on the kernel or uh, type of operating system you're using all the information will be provided in log file so this is one of the uh, important part i can say because you using the log files itself the administrator administrator will uh, take the appropriate decision in some manner so log files or maintaining the log files also plays a major role okay the next thing is installing new language so obviously uh, if you are very important no if you are very uh, keen to see the uh, different uh, style of your phone android phone uh, you may be going for some you know launchers isn't it uh, you would have tried some launchers you uh, used to change the language fonts of the language or fonts font size font shape font color etc etc so ultimately what you are going to do so ultimately you are going to change the look and feel of the system or device so in the same fashion in linux also if you want to change or if you want to install new language or if you want to remove some language separate tab will be given or lang language support will be given uh, in linux also that is the reason why they listed out this one of the point as the linux administrators task okay so run update command uh, to update package repositories and get latest package information so you can run so see i already said in linux everything runs under some terminal some commands will be there using that command you can perform so many tasks so here also what they say so you have to run update command so once you run the update command in the terminal so 
whatever the repositories whatever the packages are present in the operating system in that particular device it will be get updated so run install command with the y flag to quickly install the package and dependencies so these are the uh, you know packages they uh, just uh, uh, highlighted or uh, uh, what you say uh, if you want to quickly install something you can go for y uh, or hyphen y flag so they say hyphen y so ultimately you can see the command like sudo space apt hyphen get uh, space uh, you know install space minus y or hyphen y uh, language hyphen pack uh, hyphen he so this is the ultimate language pack so using install that command using command you can uh, install the language pack whatever the language pack available for uh, the computer system so you can go for that command so sudo means super user so ultimately for any installation for any package management or for any softwares you have to get the super user or you know administrator uh, permission so that is the reason why you go for sudo or sudo next apt get install apt get means a particular folder where you are going to uh, install all the applications and all the files or you are you are going to keep the you know packages so ultimately you are going to update or you going going to install to that particular folder using svd or you know uh, sudo i can say like sudo okay you, you usually pronounce it like sudo fine next install is nothing but installation whatever the installation you want to uh, you know make to that particular system you have to go for install then uh, as they said y or hyphen y is used for a uh, quick installation of something so that is the reason why they use that flag that that is nothing but hyphen y space language hyphen pa pack hyphen uh, you know he so or he so they, it is the ultimate language pack so now say for example so the this may find confusing isn't it you may find confusing uh, to see this so uh, I, I will ask one question if you want to install VLC uh, probably you know that VLC is a media player how to install VL VLC using command again it is yes you do you sudo or sudo space apt hyphen get space install space vlc that's it if you want to my you know hyphen y you can go for it but usually the command goes like that sudo apt get install vlc in uh, uh, did you did you get that sudo space apt get apt hyphen get space install space vlc and after that you have to pass your uh, password system password then it will be installed that is the reason why this linux is uh, safer safer for you to uh, work on because uh, for each and every installation for each and every modification for each and every updating the packages you require passwords or authentic you know it will ask the authentication that is the speciality of linux next check the system log to confirm that there are no related errors so that also one of the thing because after installation uh, you have to check the logs if there are any issues or if there are any problems in the uh, operating system if there are any problem you have to update it or you have to manipulate it. you can you can remove or you can reinstall uh, you can you can do a necessary steps you can take the necessary step so that is nothing but installing new languages next downloading and installing application so here it is a separate part of story see there are two main type of you know installation one you can go to ubuntu software center and see i am see i am giving this explanation because so the the reason is ultimately whenever we talk about linux there are so many you know um, um, way, you know versions or variations but ubuntu is widely used operating system which comes under linux so ubuntu uh, you know is, is a strong and it, it is it, it provides so many op, you know options for you to work on so that is the reason why for explanations we are considering ubuntu more right? you know compared to rest of the operating system or version of operating system available in uh, internet okay so one is you can directly go to ubuntu software center you can find the application you go for install you can you know press install button and you, you it will be installed in your system else you can go for terminal and you can go for that same command sudo space apt get to space install space application name that also possible so there are some steps there you have given to install an application click the ubuntu software center icon in a dock or search for software in the activity bar, uh, search bar when the ubuntu software launches uh, search for an application or category or find the application from the list select the application that you want to install and click install you will be asked to authenticate key entering your password once you done that your installation will begin the installation usually finishes quickly but could take a while if they have a you know, slow internet connection so see these are you can after reading out you can see one thing these points are very 
very natural very normal isn't it so this is what you do in a general you know scenario also isn't it what you do in android you know in the in the, in your smartphone if you want to install some applications you don't give password but rest of the things are same isn't it you just find a play store you search for a particular application then you open that application you go for installation you know that button that it will be in a green color isn't it you are going to press it uh, it will install uh, based on your internet connection that will be downloaded and installed automatically and you are starting to use that application isn't it the same concept for linux also but here you are passing a separate password of uh, of that particular system to install the application or to make any modification that's it you are not finding anything new here okay so here you can see the window also this is the software source for any updates it will uh, check for the uh, this one separate window will be given so here it is not about a command line so it is just for uh, you know what you say the uh, that ubuntu software center from there only you can install next you have the concept of packages okay so uh, in the previous video i have said i have said uh, deb and rpm isn't it deb debian derivative systems i said so ubuntu ubuntu and all ubuntu you know of um, this one uh, deep in zorin and all uh, comes under you know debian flavor i i explained like that so now debian means what or rpm means what so those are the packages or the style of packages you require you know you will get for a particular operating system okay we will see that ubuntu's package management system is derived from the same system used by the debian gnu you know slash you know linux distribution okay so it is a kind of distribute distribution which is uh, uh, given to the public okay the package files contains all of the necessary files metadata and instruction to implement a particular functionality or software application on your ubuntu computer so debian package files typically have an extension dot deb so deb okay so some package name uh, followed by dot operator then deb so this deb is the extension you can see for the debian flavors packages okay and usually exist in a repository which are collections of packages found online or on physical media such as cd rom discs so ultimately they say that uh, these are the packages which is you know online you can download or it will be in a cd drive usually these packages are installed from internet itself so you are going to find find the uh, particular package and you can directly download it to your to your particular system packages are normally in a pre compiled binary format thus installation is quick and requires no compiling of uh, software so you don't need to compile compile here whenever you are downloading the package it is already you know um, it's like a, you know in java you are going to study in, in the rest of the concepts like byte code and also uh, somewhat similar to byte code so ultimately what is this so it is are the, these are the pre compiled so these softwares or packages whatever you are trying to install it will be pre compiled and then you are going to install it in your system so that you can make use of that particular software so there are two types deb and rpm and you have some concepts called distros okay so distribution of distros so the dot deb files are meant for distributions of linux that derive from debian so they say see ubuntu comma linux mint and deep in zorin l ubuntu k ubuntu so all those concepts are coming under see this debian flavor so these are the operating systems actually but ultimately that package and you know structures and you know file format and all will be same as deb or dot deb the package will be dot deb okay the dot rpm files are used uh, primarily by distributions that derive from red hat based distros okay so red hat, red hat uh, you know is one of the um what you say uh, distribution which is for you know commercial use also some of the paid operating systems if it is available in internet means that that is red hat so red hat is for uh, available for free as well as commercial use or paid versions of red hat also available on the internet so they say that the dot rpm files are for fedora cent os and red hat you know distribution okay as well as the open source distro also okay so open source also for rpm based itself okay so these are the some of the concepts which you have to remember okay for deb band rpm so these are the distros available for uh, installation now you have something called so you can see you you can find the concept called uh, synaptic package manager 
so this will this application or this uh, you know window will show you what kind of packages you have what are the packages which are already being installed in your system how to maintain it what is the size when it has you know install it has been installed and you know what is the modification date what kind of packages they are what is the requirement whether you are using it or not all the information can be uh, achieved using this package manager okay uh, you know synaptic package manager so you have to download this synaptic manager from uh, ubuntu store all from uh, outside also on from online also you can try to install these packages so it is very easy for you to search the appropriate package and you can install that package in your system so that you can make use of it okay so this is one of the concept next you have see whenever we talk about packages uh, we will get the concept of you know zip files in windows we have something called zip then you can go for unzip uh, you may uh, you would have seen some tar files dot tar or something uh, you have to you know uh, extract it isn't it in the same fashion in linux also you have something like that so that is nothing but uh, gz okay tar dot xz and tar dot gz these are the two types of file system or you no know, packages which are available for linux and the same linux packages can be used for uh, working on it okay a tar file often called a tar ball is a collection of files wrapped up in one single file for easy storage okay so it is a you can think of zip files okay i don't need to you know uh, make you more confused okay it is very easy for you to understand so tar files are nothing but or xz or you know gz files are nothing but it is a kind of zip files ultimately you are binding so many small files into one uh, place and you are making it as a package so that you can compress the storage or you can compress the size or you can um, uh, fit into a particular storage and whenever you want to extract it you can extract it from a destination system that is the thing okay. <coughs> rather than keep track of whole folder in a tar file often called as a tar ball uh, a collection of you know file wrapped in uh, easy storage so uh, that uh, just a copy i guess okay uh rather than keep you know uh, keep track of a whole uh, folder of files you only need to keep track of one because why because you are uh, you know uh, wrapping up all the smaller files or folders into one package and you are transferring the package itself so that that, that will be very easy for you to uh, maintain okay a tar files are often compressed after being created uh, giving it the dot tar dot gz uh, gz uh, file extension so the file extension will be file name dot tar dot gz something like that okay technically these are uh, tgz files but uh, nearly everyone calls both dot tar and dot tar dot gz files simple you know uh, or simple tar files okay ultimately uh, in windows in the windows system we use the terminology something like zip files or zip folder you know you just send the zip file we say usually like that but in linux it is something like tar files okay tar.exe is a tar you know i know uh, achieve that it uh, maybe it is archive okay so maybe uh, tar achieve that is um, maybe archive that spelling mistake that is compressed with the xz compression technique so you are going for see that dot xz or dot gz those are the compression technique compression means when you have large number of data how to minimize and how to store it in a particular package so it is a very important because when you compress there should not be any loss of data say for example you have student detail in a particular package everyone uh, no, each and every entry has student name student age student phone number while compression while compressing the these data if the age goes out or if the phone number one of the number also missed out then it is a loss of data and it will be a very problematic in the future so this compression technique should be very strong and it should be very efficient so that whatever the compression you do you know on data the data should not be affected or you should not affect the actual data so that is the reason why some compression techniques are required for uh, you know compressing the or creating the tar files now tar.exe is also known as txz files tar files contains uncompressed files okay now tar.exz files uses lzma to compression algorithm uh, to compress the tar files so these are the some of the points so what are the compression techniques you require for tar.exz uh, so they just listed out i uh, i guess i couldn't go for that bullets you have to uh, adjust here okay so tar.exz files are used in unix operating system so these are the some of the points on 
star dot xz now tgz is a unix based uh, archive that uses gzip compression technique to compress the tgz files now you may be con you know confused what are this tgz or uh, yeah, tar.xz all this compre you know you you may be confused but uh, if someone ask you what you mean by this tar.gz or xz just say it is a package it is it is the same as zip files that's it it's the same as zip files but the technique may change or compression technique may change as well as the file name the extension whatever you give in that in windows what you do for you know folder name or package name dot zip but here the file name or package name dot tar dot gz or xz something like that okay so you have to uh, think like that fine now it uses gzip and tar combination to bind and compress data files it is also known as dot tar dot gz it it is used in installation process of some linux based operating system T, tgz files are easy to compress or decompress in unix os so these are the, some of the points which you have to remember okay i'm not saying the same question will be asked or something like that but for your knowledge as well as for the uh, benefit of yours itself i'm not uh, saying for anything else okay so it will be very easy for you to understand you have to keep all these things in your mind so it is same as zip and ultimately you are going to compress each and every thing for your work that is the thing fine now next network configuration in ubuntu so network is one of the important concept isn't it so for any operating system without network it is useless even though in your smartphone if i consider your smartphone that also same thing if you don't have the internet or if you don't have the network then why you are using those those you know devices you will feel, feel bored isn't it so that is the reason why i said network is one of the important concept okay now ubuntu ships the number of graphical utilities to con you know configure your network devices this document is you know, uh, geared towards a uh, server administrator and uh, will focus on managing your network on the command line so you can pass on this there are so many commands for network also that is a separate part of story but for na network management you have some graphical representation also some windows we can be opened and using that you can change the ip address or mac address or you can uh, you know connect to a particular wi-fi or you can create your own hot hotspot you can connect to bluetooth or you can uh, make your your particular system you know config you know you can configure the system uh, which uh, which which can set that you know which can be set as you uh, know uh, network enabled system so that also possible so ultimately why i'm saying all this because even ubuntu also support or all the linux operating system support network uh, you know configuration as well as enabling of the network you know that that is the uh, one of the information i just wanted to give another application that can help identify all network interfaces available in your system is the lshw command okay so you can go for lshw command also uh, in the terminal you can open the terminal and you can type this and you can see the different informations uh, you know coming on the monitor so if you have the linux you can see otherwise whenever you know lab happens we can see we, we can we, uh, i can show you you have to you have to you know uh, remind me that uh, to show all these uh, commands then it will be easy for you to understand this this command provides greater details around the hardware you know capabilities of specific adapters so this uh, uh, lshw means list all hardwares so that is the thing now ethernet interface settings so ethernet that is also one concept uh, okay you can go for eth tool it is a program that displays the changes ethernet card settings such as you know auto negotiation uh, next port speed duplex mode and wake on lan so all the, all these are the you know settings which are available for ethernet so the following is an example how to view the supported feature in configured setting on a ethernet inter, you know interface so ethernet again it is a concept of uh, network configuration so we, we if you are if you had subject computer networks definitely you would have uh, come across all these you know duplex mode and a port speed etc etc okay so these are the ultimate concepts of network actually
now system admin administrators routine task including configuration maintaining you know troubleshooting and managing servers and networks within data centers okay there are numerous tools and utilities in linux designed for the administrative process so they say that uh, administration uh, administrator has to you know keep track of you know configuration of something maintaining of the system troubleshooting if there if there any errors and managing the servers and network within the data center so the, all this work is of you know uh, no this work should be done by administrator itself so uh, to do all this work the administration administrator should know the concept of uh, maintaining all these things and configure configuring the system also then if there any error he has to find out the error then he have he has to troubleshoot it he, ha he has to fix that error all the work has to be done by administrator that is the reason why they listed out this concepts now th there is one more concept called adding printers okay so that is one of the capability or the, that is one of the you know uh, work done by the administrator all the basic linux basic administration has to be done along with the printers also printers also one plays one of the important role in your college also in lab you have a printer isn't it so if you want to get the print out of something you directly go for printing out uh, for uh, you know office work also that uh, mainly for office work or if you go out or if you go for some any cyber center there also the system will be connected with the printers so now we will see how exactly we can do in uh, system now at the bar uh, the go to, go to system settings and printers add and the click add and select find network printer next enter the ip address of the host field and click find so these are the some of the steps they have given how to find the or how to add the printer so so here you will see complete theory but when you actually do these things you will get the graphical interface and it will be very easy for you to do just you have to move the cursor and you have to find an appropriate option and you have to select and you have to uh, connect to the printer now but uh, as a part of uh, this work i have to explain i don't have any other option isn't it so that is the reason why i'm you know listing out all the points the system should now have found your printer <clears throat> next click forward and wait while the system searches for drivers you it will search for the drivers also if there are any drivers required for that it will be searched okay next choose the driver and install it if there any drivers are required for it then it has to be installed also next customize the installed option page if you know the defaults are not correct for example see check the duplex unit of unit if you know the printer can print the double sided so that is one of the uh, <clears throat> feature of the printer so if you want to get that you know feature you require some uh, you know what you say drivers so you can download such drivers from the internet and you can install it in your system that also available next customize the printer name description and location if you would like you know, if you want to change you can do it also that option also provided next you can go for click apply to finish and then you should now see the printer new printer in your list of you know available printer so ultimately all these things are for operating system in the operating system you can see the uh, list of available printers so that uh, you can go for some printing work also so that is the reason why they uh, included this concept in uh, um, administration of linux or the the task of the administrator that is the reason why they uh, have gone for this fine next the uh, last uh, concept here is uh, backing up uh, you know files so that is one of the important thing isn't it uh, we may we may, may not know or we never you know know uh, what happens in the future uh, for our files as well as for the system so whatever it may be the issue whatever it may be the it may be hardware issue or software issue it may be anything data should not be lost so that is the reason why backing up you know of some data is very essential very vital and very important also i can say like that because you would have, you would have seen whatever the pictures you take in your smartphone uh, if it is very good on if it is very you know attractive or you know fascinating one your work is to copy that file to your drive isn't it i don't know how many of you have that habit you just copy that particular file to google drive or google photos okay you will keep that concept in your drive so that even though it goes you know if even though you delete it or if even though you are you know system goes off still you can access it from any other device also because cloud is a distributed you know storage isn't it that is the reason why <laughs> so so why i'm saying because you know backup and recovery is very essential okay failure to have a verified backup and recovery procedures puts your data at risk of loss 
so you should not lose your data users often only learn this lesson after critical information they require is permanently lost that is the one of the this is actually the a truth because until and unless they lose the data they will never understand the concept of data or the importance of data i can say like that okay so but that is the reason why uh, instead of losing it it is better you take the backup so that uh, you know in the future you can make use of it or you can see data is required any time it is not like one one sort wise data is always required so this will be very easy uh, if you take the backup next attempting to recover uh, from the data loss can be both uh, consu time consuming and extremely difficult because once you lost it then it is very easy you know it, it, it is very difficult for you to uh, get it back so learn from others mistakes the and ensure you know the beforehand that you have system a place that protects in your data and suits your needs so this is a simple concept they have said but ultimate concept is you have to keep your data backed up so that you can uh, use those data whenever it is required okay so there are three types you can see that is full backup incremental uh, incremental backup as well as differential backup so full backup is nothing but a backup of all each and every files present in the system for a target a particular target system you can go for some targeted you know place or memory or storage where you can dump all the backed up data there for the safer side next incremental means an incremental backup backs up all the files that have changed since the last backup so yeah so uh, once you if you backup then after one week you have to again backup isn't it because in, in, in during this one week you have generated you would might have generated some new data that uh, new data also has to be backed up so that is nothing but incremental concept next differential means differential backup backs up all the files that have changed since the last full backup so whatever the backup full backup you do so after that if you have any if you changed some data or if you have upgraded or updated something uh, again that new data or fresh data has to be backed up that's the reason why they you know listed out so mainly there are three type full full uh, backup the incremental backup and differential backup next you have something called managing users and groups okay so this is one of the important i can say because each and every operating system and system will have its own users or groups okay so in your lab also if you have given with some system um, uh, consider for the first session or morning session you are using that system but after noon session some third year students or first year students may access your system with their own account that also possible now i don't know in, in our college it is something like a same one one for bca separate account will be there everyone usually log into that bc account itself but in some some places in some colleges and all what happens each and every student or each and every person will be given with its own account or his own or her own account so uh, they will be maintaining their own passwords also okay so each and every student will be having it their own account so that will be better because each and every will be, you know users will have their own privacy their own you know set of places and set of files and we cannot just you know put a you know word to another another person saying that he has deleted or she has deleted so each and every application or softwares or you know files you create it will be safely backed up or safely uh, present in your account something like that okay now user management is one of the important part of any linux system administrator's job uh, it is also one of the most common job you will you know ever do as a linux admin so managing the groups is, you know it's a common work next you can easily create a new user on ubuntu from the command line the recommended way to create the new user on ubuntu uh, operating system is add user command so you have separate command called add user so using that add user you can go for the, it is not just like add user you have to pass some arguments you have to use some flags also some information has to be passed about the user concepts are there but usually the command will be add user you have you should be using add user command next with the add user command you can either create a normal user or system user that also possible so system user will have more permissions compared to normal user normal user uh, uh, the permission will be like playing some videos audio some images or creating some files that's it but when it comes for system user each and everything uh, almost everything of a particular system can be done by system user and almost all the permission will be given to that particular person okay next the difference between normal user and system user is that the system user cannot log into system while the normal user can 
uh, use so that is the meaning the thing is so whenever you go for you know system user so he has to go for a particular place so that he, he uh, his access will be different so it is something like guest user and personal user isn't it so in ubuntu you would have seen the guest user is nothing but the person who is directly without password he is getting into the system and his permission will be very temporary whatever the files he creates in the system once he log out once he come out of that system that will be vanished or deleted so he don't have any particular permission for creating or editing of the particular file but when it comes for a particular user or normal user he will be given with his own password and username isn't it so that person can create log into that system and he can create his own files or modify his files and that files will be stored there, there itself so no changes will be taking place so that will be good okay so these are the some of the things you want to know so this is the window you can see see in this uh, there are two i guess uh, yeah there are two um, users so first my account is uh, see that administrator account second one is a standard account okay so this is the window given in ubuntu so these are the some of the concept i just wanted to you know discuss so this uh, here it, this will finish okay this this concept or the administrators you know basic administrators task or to you know tools available for linux operating system those concept finishes here so these are the information i just wanted to give so if you have any doubt definitely you can ask but these are this is last two three videos actually these are the practically oriented you know concepts until and unless you do whatever the explanation i give you can just see the textual thing or theory or you can see just a screenshot but once you do that you will get the idea actual idea so i don't know where uh, if there any uh, you know concept or if there any if the time permits definitely we will uh, discuss on this okay i will bring the system to the class and i will show you how exactly all this work can be done okay so you then then you will get the uh, practical knowledge of this particular thing Okay, so uh, that's it. Okay, let me wind up here. So if you have any uh, doubt, definitely you can ask. Okay, so yes, thanks for watching.